Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. The tensions, or some people are calling crisis, or a standoff between the United States and North Korea over its nuclear weapons program and potential missile launch, as we are told. I'm, I'm rolling my eyes here. Now joining us to talk about all of this is Eric Margulies. Eric is an internationally syndicated columnist, a book author. He's a veteran Korea watcher who specializes in North Asian military strategic affairs. Eric was a regular columnist for Japan's Minichi newspaper. He's a longtime member of the International Institute for Strategic Studies in London. His last book was American Raj. Thanks for joining us again, Eric. Good to be back with you, Paul. So uh, explain your take on what seems to be part, part theater, part what? I don't know. What, 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 from, let's start with North Korea's interest in all of this. What, why the grandstanding? Why the threats? What do they want to gain out of it? And what prompted it? Uh, new regime, Kim Jong-un, 28 or 30 years old, we don't really know, um, obviously has to uh, stake out a new position for him with the Korean North Korean military, which is the dominant force in the country, but also the Communist Party, uh, and uh, show the world that he's not the, the young kid who's just running the country, 30 years old. Alexander the Great was, I think, 28 when he conquered much of the world. But anyway, there's that, there's that side of it. Uh, but there's another, and I call this what we've been watching is an attempted jailbreak. That is, North Korea has been put in jail by the United States ever since the end of the Korean War uh, under very, very stern, strictest sanctions uh, and uh, threats. It's uh, overflown by American military aircraft. The U.S. has occasionally threatened tactical nuclear weapons uh, if there's a war in Korea. It is just in the most possible hostile condition. Uh, so North Korea has been asking for decades for normal relations with the United States, and it wants a non-aggression uh, pact with the U.S. where Washington pledges not to invade North Korea. The U.S. will not do this. It never has. It says it won't talk, it won't do very, it will barely communicate with this odious regime in North Korea. And so... Uh, the two sides remain at daggers dawn. Just recently, there were uh, American and South Korean military exercises that I, I guess if you were to view them from the lens of the North, they, they would have lo looked rather threatening. Uh, we don't hear too much about that in the media when we're hearing about this whole crisis. No, the American media has done a very poor job, as usual, uh, in covering this, uh, all these events. Every year, their annual U.S.-South Korean military exercises. And um, this year, they were joined by Australians. 40,000 South Korean and U.S. troops. Remember, there are uh, almost 30,000 American troops permanently based in South Korea. 40,000 troops maneuvering uh, close onto the border of North Korea, uh, simulating an invasion of North Korea. U.S. and South Korean naval forces around North Korea's waters, and uh, most significant of all, the U.S. this year to show America's displeasure with North Korea's third nuclear test uh, recently. Uh, the U.S. flew first a flight of B-52 heavy bombers, uh, and then a uh, two B-2 heavy stealth bombers, uh, within 30 kilometers of the border of North Korea uh, in what was clearly uh, an attempt to intimidate North Korea and to remind the North Koreans that during the Korean War of 1950-53 that U.S. heavy bombers, B-29s in this case, flattened North Korea. They, they made the rubble bounce. Everything of any value was blown to smithereens in North Korea. And uh, this was a reminder of that, but also the U.S. capability of decapitating the leadership of North Korea in a surprise strike using new, very powerful, deep penetrating bombs. What exactly does the North Koreans hope to gain from the grandstanding? Uh, the talk of a, a, a potential missile that could reach the United States and all of this. Uh, I mean, it's either an empty threat, in which case, why do the empty threat? If it's a real threat, then they're inviting some kind of retaliation. 
Uh, what, what, what do they hope to gain out of this posturing? Well, that's a, that's a big question. Uh, they, you know, in threatening nuclear war and talking about long-range missiles, it is baloney. Uh, and North Korea is, is not, the North Korean leadership is not suicidal. Uh, the launch of one nuclear missile against the U.S. and the whole North Korea would be vaporized. The danger here is if North Korea launches a non-nuclear conventional missile, uh, it could be mistaken for a nuclear-armed missile. There's no way of telling the difference, and the U.S. could uh, preempt by blitzing North Korea. Uh, it's silly in a way. It's, it's childish. People are laughing at, at North Korea, but it's also, as you said, setting itself up for retaliation. It's making itself look ridiculous. Well, one of the, one of the takes on this one of the, in the various times in the past where similar grandstanding has taken place, uh, has seemed to have been that the North Korean economy, especially on the issue of energy, that they need some kind of help. And without this kind of grandstanding, they can't get anybody's attention. Uh, there, was there not some offer or deal under the Clinton administration that Clinton, there was a sort of a promise that in exchange for not developing a weapons program, there would be help on the energy side, and then did, that got disregarded by Bush. Who, uh, am, I, am I remembering correctly here? You're remembering it perfectly correctly, Paul. The, uh, there was a, a, a decent deal that uh, said North Korea would uh, gradually dismantle its nuclear facilities uh, in exchange for American uh, food and oil, also from Japan and South Korea. Uh, it was a it was a pretty good deal, but the neo conservatives in the Bush administration sabotaged it by imposing new owners conditions on the North Koreans, and they purposely knowing that the North Koreans would go ballistic and they did, and the whole deal fell apart. Uh, there is a faction, particularly in the Republican Party, which will all, it only wants the ultimate termination for North Korea. Uh, America cannot talk to North Korea or have dealings with North Korea. It's too horrible a regime. However, comma, uh, the U.S. does manage to have cozy relations with some other very odious and horrible regimes like Uzbekistan uh, and uh, Iraq these days. So uh, it's uh, it, that was a red herring, but definitely the neocons sabotage the deal, and they will probably try and do so. Again, you can listen to the Republicans now fulminating against uh, North Korea. And, and the other thing that doesn't get reported on very much in, 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 on this side of the ocean is that there's a strong movement in South Korea that wants reunification, that wants peaceful relations with North Korea. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of support, and, and, and it would like the Americans to stay the hell out of it. Uh, that doesn't get talked about very much. Well, that's a fascinating topic. I, 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 I'm steeped in it uh, on my many trips to, to Korea. Uh, very few people in North Korea want to have anything to do with the, with the Kim regime in North Korea. They know, know it for what it is. It's a, it's a brutal and ugly and backwards uh, dictatorship. However, the, uh, the North Koreans say, we are the only true, authentic Koreans. South Korea is an American puppet state run by the imperialists. We represent the essence of, of the Korean nationhood. Uh, they point out the interesting fact that no Americans know that uh, the South Korean army of 600, armed forces of 600,000 men are under American command. Can you imagine that after 60 years after the Korean War that an American four-star general uh, has been commanding the Korean, South Korean armed forces. Uh, it's, it, it's hard to believe. But in many ways, South Korea, dependent on the American market for access, has been a very uh, compliant uh, with United States wishes. And many Koreans, therefore, are fed up with American uh, over heavy handed uh, behavior in Korea. And uh, they, you know, they, there's, appeal, there's an appeal of North Korea, particularly amongst young people. And let me add one other point that uh, half of the Koreans are Christians. It's the only non country in Asia that has a large Christian population, half are Buddhists. The Buddhists in South Korea, much more easygoing in their attitude towards North Korea. Uh, live and let live is their view. Uh, the Christian fundamentalists in South Korea, 
remember Reverend Moon for that type, uh, are very militant uh, against North Korea. And they're always demonstrating, calling for war and invasions. So the South Koreans are split on the issue. China, we know, considers uh, North Korea somewhat of a buffer, especially given all the American military force in South Korea. Uh, on the other hand, this, doesn't this get to be uh, an irritant at the very least for China? And does China have, but, but does China actually have the influence to change the situation in North Korea? It, China does because it is the sole supplier of oil to North Korea uh, and a lot of its food and, and spare parts and arms. So China speaks with a very loud voice there. But it, the situation is very interesting, Paul, because China uh, has routinely issued things about, oh, let's denuclearize and let's solve the nuclear issue, but uh, half-heartedly at best. Uh, they liked the status quo. They needed North Korea as a buffer state. They know it would they want to contemplate North Korea being taken over by South Korea and having U.S. bases implant implanted right next to the Chinese Manchuria. And now the Chinese are expressing great annoyance because they say, wait, now one voice in China is saying, wait a minute, the Americans have started this crisis with its bomber flights next to North Korea, it did it on purpose. And the reason is to bring in all kinds of new weapons and weapon systems into the Asian theater in keeping with President Obama's pivot to Asia. So the Chinese are angry at it. And they're watching US stealth fighters, and bombers, and new anti-missile systems uh, coming in. And more stuff is on the way. Hmm. All right, thanks for joining us, Eric. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. And don't forget, we're in our spring fundraising campaign. We have a $50,000 matching grant. If you donate a dollar, it triggers another dollar. And if you'd like to see more international coverage, more interviews like this one, we need your help. So thanks for joining us on The Real News Network. Thank you.